All right, guys, welcome back to another day at Two Eagles Garage. We got another project in the shop today. This lawnmower right here was picked from a scrap pile that I went and picked up. It has sat down in my scrap pile up until yesterday. I haven't touched it. I don't know anything about it. Guy said he didn't want it in his yard, didn't want it anymore. Only thing I can see wrong with it right now is the drive cable for the front wheel drive is bad. It's broke. Other than that, I know nothing about it. So we're gonna go through it, we're gonna get it running, and this one will go up for sale because I don't have a use for a push mower, I don't push cut, I use a riding mower. And we also have a special guest in the shop today. Look who is with us today. Tell them hey, baby girl. Hey. All right, guys, let's get you set up on the tripod and we'll tear into this thing. All right, let's clean it up, baby girl. While she's cleaning it off, I'm going to take the air cleaner cover off right here. From what I can tell, this is a 6.75, a little over a 6 horse. No, that's 6.75 foot pound. So it's 190 cc. Like I said, I haven't looked at this mower, guys. I don't know anything about it. So we're going to find out together what it looks like. This is loose, so evidently somebody's been in here. Ooh. What? The air filter is dirty. You guys see it? Look at that. I would say that that filter is toasty. It has a little bit of an old fuel smell to it, so it smells like the carburetor may have been leaking out a little bit. see looks fairly clean right in here what we're going to do is we're going to spray some starting fluid in it and we're going to stick it to start up after i check oil in it with the fuel tank fuel tank is dry good thing is it's a plastic fuel tank and guys if you can hear that it's pouring down rain outside right now and the oil does not look bad that smell like fuel as I get a little bit of my nose, but the oil <laughs> does not look bad, guys. Looks pretty clean, actually. Looks like it was well taken care of. Oh, look! No fuel smell. Something just flew off of it. Yeah, it's all right. Probably just dirt. Alright, let's keep cleaning. It's not locked up, it's got a brake on it, on the handle up there. I'm going to show you guys a quick fix for that. If you're working on a mower like this, take your zip tie, and instead of putting it through the correct way, flip it around and put it through backwards and that'll hold your handle down and then all you have to do is pull it off when you're done Started. So let's uh, 
Let's pour a little fuel down the throat and see if it'll run. Because the fuel tank looks clean. Doesn't look like anything's wrong with it. Yeah, well don't put them on, put them back, okay? Thank you. Alright, I got a fresh can of fuel over here. Let's throw some fuel in it and see what it does. Yeah, it's got an old fuel smell when it crunk up. So I'm betting that carburetor will probably need to be cleaned out. We ain't gonna put much in it, just enough to get it going. Let's see. That wasn't quite enough, so let's go a little more. Guys, these new eco-friendly gas cans are horrible, by the way. If I haven't mentioned that before. Alright. And by the way, I should not be able to see my breath right now. For this time of year, it's cold. Yeah. Let's see if it's going to start, guys. Bam. We'll hit it with a little more start fluid, because I bet it ain't got no gas in the carburetor. choke on it so it must have an automatic choke. I'm betting that fuel bowl is going to need to be cleaned out. We'll see. We'll take it off and clean it out, and I'll get you a good view of it. I'll show you how to take it off. It won't be that bad. Hope you guys caught all that. All right, guys. I got the uh, tools needed. I need a five sixteenths. I'm just using a little quarter inch ratchet. The baby girl's gonna help me take this one off. We got the cover off. It was only held on by one Phillips head screw. There's supposed to be two, but one of them's missing. I have to see if I can find another one somewhere. <coughs> just goes into plastic. It's a basic plastic screw. You got three bolts here. One up here, one here, and one here. And that's all that holds the carburetor in. And then you have your linkages. Be careful with the linkages because those linkages have to go in a certain spot. Most of the time it's obvious, but just in case your mower's different, keep an eye out for it. Back up a little bit so they can see. See how Daddy's doing it? Daddy will take this one out, I'll let you take the others out, okay? And guys, these are a 5 16th size. I think I told you that already, but I wanted to make sure. I think it's the same size as an 8mm. I'm not 100% positive. So don't hold me to that. Alright, you want daddy to lift some for you? That one right there looks like it's a different size or it was put in at an angle. Let's try this. Yeah, that one's weird. Daddy will find a different size socket for that when you take this other one out right here, okay? Okay. You can use both hands to hold it still. Hold your magic stick. There you go. Take your time, you're not in a hurry. Yeah, it doesn't happen. Take your time. Ah! Hey, Mom! Mom, the screwdriver. 
hunger, not in your hunger. Think about, alright, let them try this real quick, see if this one's going to fit. Okay, that one's just put in and bang it. Alright, let's get this one the rest of the way out, and then we'll figure out how to get that one out. I'm thinking somebody might have drove it in crooked. Keep taking that one off. And that one was the same size, guys. It was a 5 16 too, but for some reason you couldn't get that other socket on it. It looked like they may have drove it in sideways. Hold on. Turn it. Look, let me see. You gotta turn it that way. Okay? Thank you. Look, watch. See? Okay, let me. Okay, go for it. But you can look here. Let Daddy hold the socket and you turn it. Gotta keep it straight, okay? Slow down. You don't have to be such a hurry. Alright, now go. There you go. Keep going. if it'll come out there. You did a good job. Big girl. Thank you. Oh, there we go. All right. That cover comes off. And be careful because sometimes there's a gasket on the back of it. This one looks like it may not have one. Look. Yep, it's on the carburetor. So we'll set that aside. I got a magnetic tray over here. I'm putting all my bolts in. And then this right here. Gotta come off too. Yep, Daddy's gotta get a hose line clamp. Looking at all the linkages real quick, guys, because I want everything to go back like it was. I don't have my nozzle for my blower, so I can't blow everything off. And I don't want to go out in the rain and get it. Me either. Right, let's get that fuel line clamped off. Fuel line clamps, guys. I'm going to Harbor Freight and get you a pack of these. I don't remember how much they were, but they're perfect. All you do is clamp it on the line. And then it keeps the line shut. Now, we got a little something. We got a busted vacuum line right there, too. We'll have to address that. Cause I'm not, guys, I'm not sinking a bunch of money into this because in my area, push mowers don't sell for a whole lot. But I'm gonna make it running and reliable to use. If I can't do that, it might as well just be parts. more bolts holding the cover around. There is. There's two more bolts stuck in behind here. Right there? Yeah. This one's going to be a dirty one. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's take this screwdriver and pick some of this trash out of here real quick. I got this. Yeah, you got ratchet. Yeah. That's the one you extension to get these. Yeah, we'll use that one. You guys don't forget your linkages. Probably gonna be something like a 10 millimeter or a 3 8 Let's say a 10 millimeter, we'll see. 
but I'm not sure. Oh, there it is. This is a 3 8. Oh, there's the blower. I do have the blower. You want to go grab the hose? I'm going to blow some of this off real quick. Found my blower. I thought it was out in the car. Guys, I don't have a lot of pressure in the tank right now because I don't got the loud thing on, but it'll work. If this uh, three eighths will fit, guys. I'm not sure on what size these are. I haven't tore into one of these lawnmowers in a long time, guys. There you go. Yep, this three eighths. But the problem is, this one right here is not going to be easy to get onto. So we may have to um, find a smaller socket for that one. I, only three eighths I could find was on a bigger socket. Got one right here that may work, so we'll see. Let me grab another extension. This one should fit though for this per quarter of the trench instead of three eighths. Two. You got one right here, one right here. But the fuel line is in the way for the second one, so it may have to be used with a wrench. I have a wrench. You got a ratchet? Yeah, I got a ratchet. You want to take this one out? Okay. Get the ratchet. This? Yep, thing? take the socket off of it. No, take the socket off of it. Pull it. Can you pull it with your gloves on? Let me see. Hold the ratchet. There you go. Alright, put your ratchet on here. Gotta line it up. There you go. Alright, now turn it. You want daddy to loosen it? Yes. Alright. It's hard. It's all right. Alright, here we go. All you gotta do is turn it. There's one bolt, guys. <laughs> All right, let's see. See if I can finagle it to get to the second one. Finagle it? I think we're gonna have to have a wrench. Let me find a three eighths. Guys, this rain just didn't want to let up. Let's see if this wrench will fit. Yeah, because the ends of these things are so fat. Yeah, I should have gone better than that. This thing is wrong with daddy. This thing on this ratchet is wrong off. What? This thing on this ratchet is wrong off. Yeah, that's alright. Give me a second, guys. I'm looking for another wrench. I think I've got the right one. Quit anticipating these being so hard to get to. Oh, and this is going to take a hundred years. <laughs> this is old school right here. It's probably going to take all night. They don't have a wrench. A ratchet small enough to fit in this area. Or a socket. Nope. Nothing. Ratchet wrenches won't fit. 
Except this. Try not to mess any gaskets up in the process, guys, because this whole carburetor is going to have to be cleaned. This is that. Thought I might have to that in there make it fit. That ain't happening. All right, I guess we're going to take a minute, guys. I'll bring you back once I get this off, because this will take a minute. figured out how to get to it. You have to take the fuel line off because the fuel line is so thick the ratchet can't get to it. After you take the fuel line off, you can get to it just fine. So let's see what we got here. And guys, I could have took the bowl off with this thing on here, but I want to give the carburetor a thorough cleaning anyway. So this is the best way to do it. Plus, I want to be able to see you guys, show you guys what the carburetor looks like. Because this mower's probably been sitting for a couple of years. Because the guy that had it, I don't think he ever used it. All right, so we're going to try to take that off, I guess, because I don't want I don't want to pull this whole cover off. No, that would be bad. No, it wouldn't be bad, as I don't want it. But it would still be bad to put it back on. Nah, it's not bad. It's this one is, let's see if I'm right. Quarter inch. Quarter inch. Guys, I hope y'all had a good uh, spring break. Those of you that had a spring break. Yeah. If you guys can hear, it's still pouring down right here. Rain on a tin roof. Got to be one of the best sounds I've ever heard. Yeah. All right, let's get these linkages off here. Sometimes you have to finagle it and twist it a little bit. It'll come off. Just be careful. I'm trying not to bend it because sometimes if you overstress them, it'll cause them to act funny. There we go. Oh, had a little bit of fuel in it. Is it good fuel? Uh, it's old. I'll give it that. It's old. But here's how dirty this carburetor is, guys. Look at this. That's just a bungee cord they have. Look at how dirty this carburetor is, guys. Dirty on the outside. I can only imagine what it looks like on the inside. So I'm going to pause you guys, and we're going to take it over to the bench and clean it off. All right, guys, I don't have any brake parts cleaner to clean this off, so we're going old school. Wire brush and toothbrush. We'll just clean toothbrush. as much of this gunk off as we can. Wire brush and toothbrush. Mm -hmm. I have an ultrasonic cleaner, but I don't want to have to put it in there yet. And you can see that old yellow fuel coming out. Right now, I just don't want to get more debris in it than I have to. So we're just going to clean it like this for now. Now, if I have to, I'll pause you guys and turn the compressor on and blow some of it off. But this is how I used to do it back in the day whenever I was working on these and making good money at it. That was a long time ago, though. I used to be able to make good money off push mowers. Guys, it don't have to be perfect. I'm just looking to clean the gunk off so that I can see what everything looks like, what it may need and not need. And you're also going to need a good roll of shop towels when you do this. Yeah. I'm going to try not to destroy this gasket right here. It's probably, yeah, we're going to leave that there. 
I don't want to destroy that gasket because I don't have another one for it. Look at all that gunk. And you know where it's coming from? Mm -hmm. oh. I'm gonna get all that up. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna move it so I have a clean surface to work on. Okay. So I need you to back up. Okay. We're gonna clean our work surface here a second, guys. So I have somewhere clean to work. Because once again, I'm rebuilding the carburetor. I wanna make sure it's semi clean. You know, this ain't the perfect countertop, but it'll work. And it absorbs fuel, so I don't have puddles of fuel sitting around. <coughs> but it does make for a stinky shop for a few days. All right, see how clean it is now, guys? Not too bad. Definitely could use some brake parts cleaner. I may go pick up some today. We'll take this and wipe it off some. It does have old fuel in it, so we're going to have to check that line on the mower and make sure it's even getting fuel to it, because I don't, I don't think that there's a fuel screen in that tank, but I could be wrong. And if that's the case, the screen over there could be clogged, but we'll see. All right, guys, this is a half-inch socket on the, bottom, on the bowl. We'll pop that booger loose. And I'm trying to keep you guys in view where you can see what I'm doing. Oh, and there it goes. We'll just soak that up with a towel. And that does smell good, guys. You might want to turn your smell of vision on. <laughs> As it starts raining harder. Guys, I realize I'm not in frame with all this. I'm just trying to get it apart for you. There we go. Trying to preserve that gasket. Ooh, look at that. It is gunked. Up. Look at all that gunk in that car, baby. See it, baby? Why is that yellow? Because that's old gas. That's what old gas looks right like. There. That's. It used to be white. Come on, don't break the seal. It used to be white. Yep. Uh, we're gonna leave that alone because I do not want to break it. That yeah. Right, back up. I got a bucket down here. I pour this in on the top of some old rags and then soak it up. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that gasket there because it looks pretty roached. I don't want to break it because, like I said, I don't have any other gaskets for these, so we're just gonna clean around it for now. Yeah, it's got some gunk up in there too. See that chunk of rust? So we're gonna pull the float. Baby girl, go get me that other magnetic tray over there, please. Thank you, Swifty. Look, right here on the toolbox. You can close that drawer. All right, now get it. Pull hard. Yeah, that one's got double magnets on it. Pull hard. There you go. Because it holds it better. Thank you, sweet pea. Why didn't they just, if you guys, why didn't they just put like one magnet in the middle? Because it needs two magnets. All right, there's your float and your needle. This one may go into the ultrasonic. Needle looks good. That seat looks like it's in real good condition. Just got a little gunk down in it. So this one may not have to go in the ultrasonic. Let's see. Let's see if I can get this rust off of here. Looks like just a surface built up on it. Yeah, that'll clean up real nice. Especially once I get some brake parts cleaning. Let's 
tape and wipe it out real good. And guys, it may take a few times doing this, but I'm hoping to do it once and not have to do it again. And I know most of you would say, put a new carburetor on it, put a new carburetor on it. Once again, I'm trying not to spend a lot of money on it. Because they don't bring a lot in my area. That's for sure. Right, here, go ahead, go. Don't touch the bristles. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna run some cleaner over it after I go get some. I meant to go pick up some this week and just haven't had a chance. So we'll lay that aside for now. I could have swore I had another can of it here somewhere, but I guess I don't. I don't know, we might plop it in the ultrasonic cleaner just to see how it does. My concern is this gasket. I don't wanna ruin this gasket. I don't know, we might try it and see. Oh. All the problem is I would have to use just straight water because all the chemicals I've ever tried to use in the ultrasonic cleaner ruins aluminum carburetors. I've tried purple power, purple power is a no-go. I've ruined so many carburetors with that stuff, it's not funny. Um, just test carburetors because I was playing around with it. I I don't, this is the first time I've ever had an ultrasonic cleaner. And I think I've got something else. I've got dish detergent out here I could use. I don't think that would hurt it. Dawn dish detergent. But like I said, again, my concern is this seal. Because right now I'm just wanting to make sure it's gonna run good. I'm not 100% positive on how it's gonna run. But it sounded like it was gonna run good with no problems, so we're gonna see. We're gonna take this and kinda of wipe out this bowl. It's got a few dents on it, so it's taking some damage. At some point. Putty knife? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's supposed to be there. Daddy put it there. Yeah, that seal is just so brittle. Probably shouldn't do that. Come on, don't break on me. Just gotta be real careful. There we go. Come off in one piece. Come off in one piece. Yep, Daddy was able to save it. Are they expensive? No, they're not expensive. Daddy just don't have another one right now. And you have to fix it right now? You don't have to, but I don't want to spend any money on it unless I have to. Okay. The bowl come pretty clean. It's not too bad. The float doesn't look too bad. Just yellow, that's about it. And this is an original Briggs and Stratton piece too. So I will figure out what I'm gonna do as far as cleaning this guys, and then we will bring you back. All right guys, carburetor is out of the ultrasonic cleaner and man, look at the difference. Nice, sparkly, clean carburetor. Looks almost like a brand new carburetor. Cleaned out all the passages. This is the float. The bowl come pretty clean. Needle. 
So let's reassemble this thing, guys. We're gonna slide our needle into the float, like so. Then we're gonna set the float right down here. Put our pin back in. And make sure it works. What you wanna do is you wanna take and blow air into this with your mouth. And if it doesn't come out, you know it seals. And if you turn it back over, air comes out and it seals. Turn it upside down, if it seals, you know it's good. The float floated in the solution. So I know that that part's good. And I know this is kind of sacrilegious to use this on this uh, clean carburetor, but hey, I don't have a new gasket. Got to do what I got to do. Yep. That right, little girl. Yes. It's always right to make sure you got to do the things like you're supposed to do it. That's right. Proper thing to do would be to buy new gaskets for it. Right now, we're trying to make sure it's just going to run yeah. and function. Yeah. Because I still don't know, guys. I still don't know if the transmission works on this thing or not. I don't know if there's an issue with it or not, so we will find out. Don't over tighten it, just tighten it enough. All right, there's that. Ah, oh, crap. I hope you guys caught that. I forgot the little gasket that goes up under this bolt. Give me a like if you caught me not putting that back on. Guys, remember, like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. I know it ain't much, but we'll get into more stuff later on down the road. With the weather being so crazy here right now, I'm just confined to pretty much inside the building. We're stuck in the building. We're not stuck in the building, we're just inside the building. There we go. There's that, guys. Nice, clean, all put back together. We have this gasket here and it did wind up splitting, but I'm hoping once I put it back together, it'll be all right. I can always order this later if I have to. It's not that big a deal to replace it. So let's put this carburetor back on the mower and see what happens, guys. All right, guys. Carburetor is back installed. Everything's back like it should be. I made sure I had fuel coming through the line. It has decent, clean fuel coming through it. Let's uh, give it a, a shot of ether. And we'll see if it's gonna work. I'll try to keep it where you guys can see it. Let's see. This shot of ether is just to get it going, and hopefully it'll pick up fuel on its own. So let's see what it's gonna do, guys. I know I still need to put the cover back on it.
All right, guys. It runs good. It smokes a little bit, but I'm thinking that may have been because it was turned up on its side or something in the scrap pile. So we'll run it for a little while, see how it does. But it seems to run smooth. We'll take this cover off and make sure there's no mouse nest or anything in it, which is why I didn't put that back on. But uh, we'll see what happens, guys. I'm gonna tinker around for a minute, figure out how this transmission works. Oh, here we go. Cable for it. I don't know if it'll activate it or not. Maybe it froze up. Oh, this cover's loose. Let's see if it's on. There we go. Uh, the screws are missing for the cover. Apparently. There's the belt. So the belt's there. How is that supposed to work? The cable's rusted up right there. So, okay, I see. But what I understand, it's supposed to grab that and lift it up. And then that engages the belt. Yep, because what it would do is pull on the cable and lift that up. I'm assuming that's how it works. I've never messed with these very much, guys, so bear with me as I learn. Alright, I'm going to start it back up, and we're going to see if that transmission will work. Let me get my country boy handlebar holder on. I used to do this a lot when I push cut grass with the zip ties on the handlebars, because I got tired of holding the handle. Sometimes a really good zip tie is a whole good. scrap pile pick right there hope you guys enjoyed this video it does smell like there's a little trash up under that and that's what it looks like it's doing is burning off trash and gunk from it so we'll take this cover off clean out up under it and then we'll run it and then ship it on up the road all right guys thank you for watching thank you for spending another day with two eagles garage hope y'all have a good week Another scrap pile pick fixed and ready to test.